Hello, everybody. How you guys doing? That's great. Huh? Are you ready for Thanksgiving? I'm not really a Thanksgiving fan. I guess I should. I guess I should. I guess I should, I guess I should have said that. I guess I should have said that after uh, off the camera. Fuck it, um, I'm plummeted. I'm, I am, I am that guy. What? What? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, two things. I'm that guy. So I'm the guy that's like, um, I feel like every day you should be thankful. It shouldn't just be one day that you take out of the day that you thankful. I think it's, you know, same thing with like Valentine's Day. It's like, you should treat your girl good every day, not just because there's one special day. Now, do you have to participate in that day? You probably should, because um, it probably won't work out for you. Um, and then I'm not really a fan of the Thanksgiving food. I like normal food, not really a turkey guy, not really ham, God bless you. Um, so. I am Thanksgiving every day. What do you eat on Thanksgiving? Uh, my mom used to make spaghetti. She used to make a side of spaghetti, like everybody had turkey and all that stuff. And I had like a side of spaghetti or something. So I don't know, whatever I'm feeling that day. Most closer. I mean, most stores are closed, so. So is it fair to say you think Thanksgiving dinner is overrated? I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying if you love Thanksgiving food, you should eat it on, on the day. Speaking of being thankful for things, look, K.J. Wright is having a great season by the numbers. He's three away from passing Keith Butler. What's the thing about him that doesn't show up in the stats that you are thankful and appreciative that your teammate does? Um, I think his, his attention to detail, his in intellect. Um, you know, I think something that stands out was uh, there was a play last year, um, it was against Arizona. They ran like a, Larry Fitzgerald did like a fake pass and and uh, he scored on it and KJ tried to make it. it. It wasn't his play, but he was trying to make it and he didn't make it, uh, Larry Fitzgerald scored. And then coming to the playoff game versus Dallas, they run that same play and KJ recognizes it, sees it, goes and picks it. And it's so many moments like that where it's like when you show him one play, he like remembers it for like the rest of his life. So you should never try to run that play again. So just his intellect, how smart he is. Um, you know, obviously I think, you know, a lot of people know how amazing person he is and uh, I'm happy for his success. There was a lot of changes on the strength and conditioning staff over the off season. Can you feel the, maybe the difference in the new stuff that the staff has brought this year? Um, I definitely feel like there's a difference. There was a lot of upgrade in, the, um, in some of the workout stuff that we were using. Um, but you just, you know, they kind of came from the, co the collegiate level and you could just feel their energy. It was a lot more, you know, I think, um, you know, last year we only had like three guys. Now we got like five or six. And so just the energy in the room when you working out uh, is great. Definitely feel uh, stronger. And so they, they've been amazing. Bobby, I heard that uh, yesterday you spent some time at a Safeway in West Seattle. Um, I did. You heard that. Food for some families. What went into that? Uh, well, I was originally there to uh, to pack um, some uh, Thanksgiving food for the tiny homes that I kind of helped out uh, early in the year. And then the area that we were at in Safeway was kind of where, I guess, the high school students normally hang out. So we were kind of in a... Uh, area and then uh, I kind of was like while we were waiting I saw everybody like Thanksgiving shopping and I was just like you know I thought it'd be cool if if uh, when they went to the cash register they didn't have to pay and so um, you know I kind of secretly try to say that I was paying for their meals and then there was a bunch of kids that we were taking up their space that came I don't think they knew that I was doing that, so they were gonna watch me the whole time and miss on the opportunity. So then I told them to go shop, and then social media, and the rest is history. I got out before the cameras got in there, though. So that was the thing. I, I went there to just, um, you know, bag some food for the tiny homes that I, uh, you know, been a part of, and it kind of turned into something else. 
What's the history with the tiny homes? Um, you know, we were, uh, you know, there's a lot of tiny homes in Seattle. They're basically um, for low income families. They, uh, um, you know, kind of give them shelter, kind of give them homes. And, uh, you know, I kind of, they don't have like certain supplies. Like one of them didn't have like a refrigerator. So it's like, all right, when you get food, like how do you even, um, you know, store the food? And so they had to try to figure out how to, um, they had to figure out what foods they can get because they knew they didn't have a refrigerator. So I uh, found that out, wanted to help, um, ended up helping. There's about nine in the area, ended up helping um, them get all the little things that they need as well as food. And then uh, I end up building some more. So I'm actually gonna build some more tiny homes so more people can uh, go in and, and sleep and don't have to be homeless. Are these like the single room, uh, really like apartments, those type of things? Yeah, it's literally like a tiny home. Like if you walk into it, it's just four walls and um, you know, family sleep and things of that nature. I didn't really wanna like invade they you know, privacy, you know, some, some let me come in and, and see how they were living. Um, and then outside of that, if, if uh, they weren't comfortable, I wasn't gonna uh, be in there. And these are in Seattle or all over Seattle? Or? Uh, it's, it's a little over Seattle, but there's different areas that we help. In the same way, was it West Seattle, is that right? It was, the, it was West Seattle, I think right down the street from the West Seattle High School. I didn't know that it was high schools right down there, but then they just start coming in. With his cell phones. Did you get to see the reaction of the people at the register? Um, I got to see the reaction of one lady, because uh, she was like really surprised. But outside of that, I didn't go down there because the original thing was supposed to be—they weren't supposed to know that I did that. But with cell phones, it's kind of hard to do that. So I mean, did anybody say anything to you afterward, or people when they figured it out? I mean, I saw tweets. I saw tweets, and and um, the kids came up after they got a, a bunch of junk. Came up and said thank you. Um, so that was pretty cool. We're we're all asking you about this now, so you're talking about. But generally, you don't promote these kind of things. So why is it important you just kind of do it fly under the radar? Uh, yeah, I think it's more like my team say I need to talk about it more, but. Um, I, when I do it, I, it's genuine. It's from the heart. I don't really care if people see that I do it or notice that I do it or even recognize it was me doing. I just do it because I feel like you know there's a lot of people out there that uh, need a hand, and um, you know I try to lend a hand. And like, I don't really want like um, acknowledgement or want people to pat me on the back or whatever. I just want to help the people that I feel like I can help and. You know, if there's an opportunity that I can help, I do it. And nine times out of 10, it's, it's pretty quiet. So um, that's just how it is. I want it to be genuine. I want them to know that, you know, I'm not doing this for attention. Was any one moment that you got present to the need that's out there? And so you began to help, or is it just something that evolved, like in terms of you knowing the people, you know, the homeless that you're helping out, the, the kids, was there anything you were impacted by that in your life or um i think it was just a little bit of, of everything um you know i, I kind of when you when you grew up you seen like your some of your classmates that didn't have food or you know depended on that that meal that they got at the the thing so that kind of kind of spiraled everything to it cuz i have you know i i went into a school and and i found out like you know like the kids who don't pay off their debt um, they food debt, it follows them until they pay it off. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'm pretty sure that debt can grow pretty crazy. So um, it's just little things. When you go and you walk the street and you see some, you know, you see a mother, you know, with her kids sitting on the, on the side of the, um, the road and don't have a house, like you just stop and think like, man, what was that? What if that was me? Or what if that was like my family or my sister, or, you know, whatever. And so um, I think it's those experiences. I think you just walk in and live in life and, and being grateful for the position that you're in and, you know, try to help people when you can. Uh, move on to the game a little bit, that, if that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's Viking, Vikings offense, seems like they've, they've got a lot of different weapons. Just what stands out when you look at them? Um, they definitely, uh, a team that's, going, that's, that's committed to running the ball. And so they're going, uh, you know, hand it off to Cook, and, and we got to do a great job of um, stopping that because I feel like that kind of opens up uh, their whole game. Um, you know, 
watching him, you know, he's going to hit the hole very, very hard. He's very explosive. He, they get him on screens, pass game. Um, he's a guy that we definitely got to watch out for. You know, I think Kirk Cousins has, has been doing a great job this season, um, not only managing games, but taking his shots. Uh, the last game when you watched them, they were down 20 points and they were able to, to you know, fight their way back. And so uh, we got to understand that, you know, no matter what the score is during the game, they're going to keep fighting. And we got to do our, a great job of, of just coming out with great energy and, you know, playing on their side of the ball. What do you think of the uniform combo this week? Hmm? What do you think of the uniform combo this week? Uh, I think we're going green top, blue bottom. I think uh, I think it looked fire with the Jays I got. <laughs> it's probably an obvious question, but with what the pass rush has done these past two games, just how much does that help everyone on the back end when when you're getting eight sacks in two games and all the quarterback pressures? Yeah, it just makes it makes our life easier. You know, I think when you have guys like that getting back there and, and making you know being as disruptive as they are, um, I think you definitely feel it on the back end because the quarterback is rushing his throws. Um, he's not as accurate. Uh, he does, you know, a lot of the quarterbacks rush their throws and things like that. So, you know, it allows us to make the plays, it allows us to get picks, um, you know, on those opportunities where they, you know, not accurate. And so I think it all works together. It always starts up front. We always preach that, that, you know, as long as they go going, we get going. And so they've been doing an amazing job uh, helping us out. You have to communicate a lot with Quandre. What, what's that been like now with two games with him? It's been great. I mean, he's not, you know, he's not a rookie. He's not a young guy. He's, he's a, you know, guy that's been playing the league for for quite some time. So he was able to pick it up pretty fast. And and um, you know, like I said, I, I've known him, you know, from uh, uh, different, not playing on the team, but just you know, in the football world. So uh, we were able to just, you know, kind of communicate really, really quick. And and it's been, he's been really good. He's kind of crazy, just how much he seems to know football-wise and how easily he's been able to strike up in-depth conversations with him since he's been here. Have you picked up on that pretty quickly as well, just the way he's kind of seamlessly fit into your, your defense and all? Yeah, he definitely. He's definitely really intelligent from the football standpoint, for sure. Um, you know, I, he went to Texas, and people from Texas think that that's where football was made. But uh, California has something to say about that. But you can definitely tell he knows the game. He understands the game. He studies the game. Uh, he's passionate about the game. He loves what he's doing, and you know I think that's that's why he's able to communicate the way that he's communicating because he's compassionate. He's passionate about what he does and believes in, in the guys he's playing with. As captains, I'm sorry. How much input do you have on the uniforms? Do they ask you about it or what you want to wear? Or? Oh yeah, we definitely have some input. I definitely wanted to see this color combo. I think you know I think the fans from. You know, Monday night might help their eyes just a little bit. So, so you guys are welcome. Is that up to you guys? What jerseys you wear every week? Um, well, they give us a they give us a layout of what they're thinking and when they're gonna wear the jerseys. If it was up to me, we would have black jerseys already. Uh, black jerseys with green trim, uh, Nike. Just to let you know. But so they 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 give you guys like different possibilities, and you they let you pick every week. Yeah, they kind of like all right. They give us the whole 16-game um, schedule and like, hey, what you thinking right here? And they'll ask the, like by like 10 guys, and you say what you like, what you don't like, and at the end of the day, they ultimately make the, um, you know, the final say so. Um, but if it feels up to me. We wear black jerseys so they, uh, every week. Sorry, so they Nike. they decided for the season all 16 games that they pick it out ahead of time. For the yeah, I think they pick it out during the. Um, during OTAs or something like that. And but if there's a combo that, that we don't want, I mean, we could say something and change it. What's your favorite and least favorite combo? Favorite combo is um blue on gray or the all grays or the blacks that are coming. <laughs> <laughs> um least favorite com combo is is a uh, all white. I hate all white. It just get dirty and it's just whack. Would you like to do the throwbacks? Huh? Would you like to do throwbacks? Yeah, yeah, of course. And we could throw it back to the black jerseys that's coming. <laughs> that's coming. So. Throw it back to the future? Yeah, just throw back in a way that, you know, what it would look like if we were to throw back to black jerseys. How long have you been pushing for those? Since I've been in the league. Yeah, so I was trying to get some black jerseys at Utah State, and then they got black jerseys the moment I left. <laughs> so that was jacked up. Y'all should send me a nine. Thank you. Um, 
And so, yeah, I'm going to keep pushing for that. And until I leave, hopefully before I leave here, you will see a black jersey combo. If y'all see that, I would be the happiest man in the world. What's the resistance? Why is it happening? Um, they try to say it's not a part of our team colors, but I mean, like you said, we make up our team colors, right? So we got black seats. 49ers have black jerseys. That's that. They don't have black and they, they don't have black and green jerseys. They got black with red trim. That's not really that cool. Black with green trim with some black J's would be nice. Just an opinion. And I'll be thankful for it. Just saying. Anything else, thanks, Bobby.